work with that. <laughs> hey, peeps and duds, and welcome back to Tricks and Treats with me, Ninj. <laughs> so, funny story. After buying the super creepy Elsa doll that's the size of an actual toddler, uh, I looked up on Amazon and found out that the price of the doll is $150 to almost $300. And that is literally insane. I bought the doll thinking that I could like take it apart and stick its limbs into bushes or hang it, burn its face, or turn it into a zombie. But I would feel like a terrible person if I did that to such an expensive doll. So instead of repurposing the doll for Halloween decor, I'm actually gonna restore it. Give it a new life. It's still gonna be Halloween themed, but it's gonna be the beautiful. Since this has been in a thrift store and belonged to a child, I'm gonna give it a bath. So I'm taking off her clothes. I'm doing a braid and chucking it into the bath. I'm now blow drying her hair and you can see that her scalp looks funny. Her hair has been positioned weirdly so you have to pull it back somehow with like a braid or a ponytail. So I put her hair into a ponytail and started to work on her eyes. I first sand her eyes so that the paint could stick on better and I'm gonna change her eyes from a light blue to a emerald green. I'm not gonna make her Elsa anymore because I want her to be her own person and I don't want her to look like, well, cheap even though it's expensive. So I'm gonna try to mimic the original design as much as possible. I was wondering why would an expensive doll be in the thrift store, but then my mom came up with a theory that maybe it used to belong to a little girl and she passed away and her family donated it because they didn't want the doll to remind them of their lost daughter. Yeah, that got dark really quickly. For some reason my camera died, so you guys missed some detailing. So I just took a round pin with white paint and added in the white parts into her eyes, like the little gleams. And I also used glow-in-the-dark paint over the green part of her eye because I need to add a little spooky factor into her eyes. I'm now adding glossy varnish to her eyes because I don't want it to look like flat paint. Also, I'm adding a velvet varnish to her printed on details because I noticed that they got scratched. So I repaired those and coated it in the velvety varnish. The link's in the description, by the way, because I highly recommend this varnish. I asked my mom to help me dye the hair of the doll but the dye is not that great since it's from the dollar store, so I'm gonna fix that in a later video. Now time for the doll to actually get clothes. I started to cut up and destroy the dress so I could make patterns and templates for the sundress. We went back to the thrift store to find materials for the dress. But then we stumbled across a toddler dress that fits the doll perfectly, and it's already Halloween themed. So I destroyed the Elsa dress and did all that work making the templates for nothing. Also, I found a duck and I really want a duck, but my mom wouldn't let me. The doll's looking great so far, but I feel like something's missing. Hmm. Oh yeah, it needs a hat. And also, the Elsa doll didn't come with shoes, so I need to make her new shoes. I'm using black felt to make the hat and the shoes. So I'm just taking rectangle pieces of felt for her shoes. And I don't really know how to explain this, because when I'm in the zone, I have no idea what I did. So I started sewing the felt into the shape I want, and <laughs> this happened. The doll fell. Ah! She's probably gonna murder me someday, but it's fine. But seriously, whenever I'm in the zone, I like, can't, I literally cannot focus on anything else. I'm just working and planning out so it doesn't fail. So I'm using the black fell again to make a witch's hat. So I found this orange plate that is the perfect size for the outer rim of the hat. And next I grabbed a bowl that's a little snug on our head and then using that for the center portion of the witch's hat. I want the hat to fit snug and I don't want it to be too loose. So I'm using the same bowl to make a square that is twice the size of the bowl. 
up and down, so I can make the cone of the witch's hat. So I'm sewing the two sides together and then trimming it so that it's nice and round at the bottom. The cone was a little too tall so I used some hot glue and added in some creases so it gives it some charm, fixes the height problem, and makes it look a little older. And here's the final result. A beautiful doll. Her name is now Elizabeth. but. I'll just call her Lizzie for short. She turned out beautiful, and I asked my friend's opinion on this doll, and they say she doesn't even look like Elsa anymore, and I'm really proud of that. Nice work, me. Nice work. So I have this basic pitchfork, and... Well, to be honest, it just looks so cheap. It's made of foam and plastic, and the plastic part is hollow. The foam is really round and really thick. I'm gonna try to improve it and make it worthwhile. I was originally planning on melting some foam to make it into putty and then letting the putty harden so that it becomes a foam sculptural element. But the nail polish remover will not melt the foam. And I did this another time and for some reason it wasn't doing it this time. So I had to scratch the idea and cut. I had to cut away the foam. So I'm making it really jagged, which was totally on purpose, and making it sharper, making it look like it could actually poke someone's eye out, which I think it can, and adding in some more fine details because it barely had any details on the original design. Let's first off work with the handle. It's plastic, it feels light, I want it to be heavier. So I tried to yank it off, didn't work. I tried to pry it off, didn't work. So I noticed it was hot glued there. I then used the hairdryer to melt away the glue, nearly burning my fingers off in the process. Perfect, now time to work on the new handle. Uh, I'm using a wooden dowel, and when I was buying this wooden dowel, I was like, hey, this is a perfect size for the handle. And when I got home, I realized it's the exact same size as the plastic tube. Also, I realized that the tube has been flattened so it would fit into the foam perfectly. So I can't do that with wood, so I have to sand off the front part so it could fit in nice and snug. I just hot glued the new handle back into place and it was time to paint. I used acrylic paint for this, but I highly don't recommend this. Foam is kind of flexible, and if you put acrylic paint on something that's flexible, it would crack. So I recommend using fabric paint for this. I started off with black with a little bit of gray, which did nothing. And I was going with a rustic look because the jagged edges reminded me of like sharp rocks or rusted metal. So I started off with a black and then went over it with a red. I then got a little bit of water and added some black and brown. Again, did nothing to neutralize the black paint. The wooden dowel had a nice grain to it, and I didn't want to cover it. It would be a shame to paint over that. And also it'll help with the rustic vibe to go with a weaker paint. So I used watered down paint and left it on there to dry. When I realized it started to crack, I then decided to put matte Mod Podge over it, which did not do much, it still cracked anyway, but at least it prevented it a little bit. I used a matte varnish over the handle and voila! An instant awesome pitchfork. Time to stab some people at school. Just kidding, I cannot do that. This pitchfork turned out perfect, almost. Well, at least it looks better. It looks more authentic than cheap. Huh. The pitchfork fits her hands perfectly. She's totally not gonna murder me in my sleep. Okay, when I was putting these items together, for some reason the pitchfork fits her hands perfectly. Like I dropped the pitchfork right next to her and she caught it, which <laughs> scares me. She's probably possessed still. I think the doll is still haunted. But hey, we could be friends. Why hey peeps and duds, and Happy late Halloween! I am so sorry this is a late Halloween video, 
but this video was a pain to make and autumn is the busiest season of my life so i'm again i'm sorry and i hope you guys enjoyed the video and the thrifted item makeover also if you're wondering yes this is unfortunately the end of this season of tricks and treats well it's just the finale of Tricks and Treats 2018, so it's going to come back next year and the year after, so can't wait. It's going to be way better next time. Again, happy late Halloween, and I'll see you peeps later. Goodbye!